What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown with another IoT hacking video. Today I have a Chinese knockoff Chromecast device that I got from a mall in Southeast Asia and we are going to begin our journey of reverse engineering this device. We're going to start with firmware extraction and this is going to be one take this video. I have not attempted to extract this firmware before. I've only done a minimal amount of recon and we're going to see all of the ups and downs of what I go through to get the firmware off of this device. So let's go over to my workbench and get started. All right, so here is our knockoff Chromecast device. You can see there it's called Anycast. Um, here's the box that it came in, uh, just your standard knockoff language, share online streaming to your TV, you know, uh, very, very professional stuff here. So uh, I don't really care about that. I just want to open up this piece of hardware and see how it works. And so I've got my uh, little iFixit tool here. And so we're going to go ahead and crack this open. There's no screws. Uh, this case just kind of pops open like that and we can see what is inside and I'm just going to discard this shell because we really don't need that anymore. Um, now we're going to actually dive underneath the microscope to take an even closer look at this device. So uh, here you can see uh, what is uh, the main uh, compute that we have here on this fake Chromecast device. Uh, next to it, we have the memory. So you can see all of these, uh, all of the, the, the buses here between the CPU and the memory. Um, over here, uh, it's easier to see on this side of the board actually, we have the micro USB, which powers the device um, and may do a little bit more, but we'll save that for another video. Uh, here we have a little push button and over here we have what we're going to be looking at uh, today. Uh, I mean obviously we have the HDMI part of the dongle here. So uh, right here is our spy flash chip and we're going to go ahead and just zoom in nice and tight on this and make sure it's nice and in focus. Uh, so here we can see the identifying information on our flash chip. And the main number that I am interested in here is uh, the uh, G25Q32C marking that we see on this chip. Um, also notice, uh, yeah, that we see, um, yeah, there's this G logo above the other G and uh, this is kind of a logo for the company that makes this device. So we're going to go ahead and just pop over to my computer really fast and bring up my flash reader and the software that works with that flash reader to see a little bit of the recon that I did. Like I said, I did open up this device and do a little research on this flash chip and I have identified that flash chip within this software. This is the XG Pro software that goes with the XGeku universal programmer that I have over on my desk. So here I have this device pulled up or this, this chip. I've searched for it and you can see that I, I had to do a little Googling to figure out that it's actually called the GD25Q32C. So that is the one little bit of recon I did. I, I, I found out that other name just with a bit of Googling and that got us here. Uh, you'll notice that this chip has a bunch of different package types that it supports. And so here the package type we're gonna, we're gonna be using is the SOP8 package. And so we click on that and then if we go into device info, it's gonna show us that, hey, here's how you position the chip in the reader once, once we get the chip off of the board. But my goal today is to desolder this chip from the board, put it into our universal programmer, and then extract that firmware off onto our computer and then 
do our first stages of analysis on that firmware that we extracted. Uh, there will definitely be more analysis of that firmware for later videos. But just wanted to show you the little bit of recon, the little bit of cheating that I did in this process to make sure that my flash reader would uh, not fail me in the end. So let's go back to our microscope and I am gonna just zoom this out as far as we can go. And over on my desk, I have my hot air ready to go. I am going to take some flux and I'm going to just put a little bit of flux on either edge of this chip. And this is really just gonna help with the desoldering process, getting that solder to flow. Uh, now I got my hot air station firing up here and I'm going to just kind of try to first heat the general area around the chip. And I am gonna turn on, there's, it's gonna get a little loud because I'm gonna turn on my fume extractor to not breathe all this stuff in. And then with my other hand, I'm gonna be holding my tweezers to wait for this to get hot enough for me to pull it off. Oh, and that was quick. Very nice, all right. That was, that was way faster than I expected that to be, all right. That's probably because I'm used to doing that as like 48 pin chips that take a year to pull off. Okay, so we've got our chip here, and now I'm going to, yeah, just move it to a clean, relatively clean spot on my workspace. Let's get, let's zoom in a little bit. And so now, yeah, it's gonna fling away. Let's get it back in there. So I've got a bunch of that flux. Ew, you can see it there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some Q-tips and some isopropyl alcohol and we're just going to clean as much of that flux off of here as we can uh, while trying not to get too many of these fibers caught on the bottom of those legs like I did there. All right, I'm gonna start with another end of the Q-tip. Just go back and forth there very gently and flip it over. Clean off the top, clean off the legs on the sides. And that's just gonna get that flux off of there as much as we can. I'll grab one more Q-tip and do that again. Cause I think I still got a little bit on this corner down here. All right. Looks good. And you know what? There's not, normally I would like try to like clean any residual solder on these legs, but these legs look pretty clean. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing a whole bunch of solder sticking to them. So I think we're pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw some more hot air at this and that's gonna just evaporate away any of that isopropyl alcohol. And now, we have ourselves a pretty clean ship there. So there it is. And uh, you can see it when it's under the microscope, but you're just gonna have to believe me now because it's uh, really zoomed out. So this corner of the chip here in the upper left-hand corner, there is a dot on the chip indicating that this is pin one. And if you remember, we had our software, our, our software that works with this universal programmer. And let me just uh, face it this way, because the, this shows us that the pin one indicator for this system is, is it's telling us that it's all the way up here. And so 
it wanted us to have our socket placed all the way at the bottom of the reader. Again, I'll just like flash back here. So you can see right there in the software, it's telling us that it wants the chip to be all the way at the bottom, but that pin one, it wants it to be facing uh, towards the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that chip and we're gonna place it in just like it had it, had it shown in that diagram. So we're going to push in on our socket. Oh man, okay, that's hilarious. Okay, so this is fail number one. So this is the wrong socket. So now I have to look through my bag of, of tricks here and I have to see, is this the right socket? Nope, so this one was too big, this one's too small. I'm just like letting this chip fly around. So I've got a bag of, other sockets here. Let's see if this is the right size. This is what happens when I do this in one take and I don't rehearse it ahead of time. All right, this looks right. This one is the right size. Oh yeah. All right. So I'm actually going to use the microscope to help me make sure that this is aligned in the socket. Uh, I can kind of do it by hand, uh, just by my eyeballs, but it's always helpful to have the microscope. So here we go, obviously it's blurry. I'm gonna have to get in focus there. And now we just wanna make sure that this is all the way at the bottom and that we're making contact with all those legs. There we go. And we can obviously use the microscope to verify, uh, again, like I said, no solder really stuck to this chip, but that there's no solder like bridging uh, in between these different pins on the chip. So uh, we did that pretty well. Now let's move our microscope away. So now you can see how this gets inserted. So uh, this, there's this locking mechanism here. And so we unlock it and you can see how it opens up all these, all these spaces to put these pins in. I'm gonna drop that in and then we're gonna lock it and it's connected. So now we should be able to go over to our desk and switch to our screen here. Okay, and this is the moment of truth that we are going to check this. Uh, we're going to do pin detect. So uh, it should be able to read the chip ID and it should match with what the XGeku, this XG Pro software expects to be the chip ID. But if those are off a little bit, you can always take pin detect off and just try to do the read anyway, which I have done at times. Uh, let's see how this goes. This is always a bit nerve wracking to see if this will actually work. So we're gonna go to device, read. Whoa, all right. You see that bar go across, you get excited because something good happened. And then, Something even better happened. We get like ASCII data here. So NCRC bootloader, you know, this is good. This is very good. All right. We have a good firmware read, it seems. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I've got a location that we're going to save this. So I'm running this XG Pro software. It's Windows only software. It's terrible, probably Chinese spyware. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah, let's just not think about that right, right now. Um, we're going to save it to a directory, uh, to a file called firmware.bin. So we're gonna hit save as, file's been saved, and let's pop over into our terminal. Let's make, let me make that bigger. And now we have our file here. There we go. It's a, it's, a, it's a four meg file. That's what we expected. And we can, let's just, let's just run file on it. Okay, it didn't, it didn't identify anything. That's, that's to be expected. Now let's run bin walk. We're not even gonna run it with the dash E flag, which is the extraction flag. Let's just see if it identifies anything interesting inside of there. Um, yeah, I almost wondered if it wouldn't. I am going to have to do more research into that, CP, into that CPU uh, device because this device has some signs of looking like 
nothing I've ever looked at in, in my life. So it has this J-Boot stag header uh, throughout the thing. Um, but no like real file systems were detected. So like I said, this is going to have to be, uh, there's gonna have to be some extended analysis that I do that I can't do all on camera. But I am gonna show some of the initial analysis that I would do if I'm not really getting a file system to extract out of this. So the first thing is let's run strings on it and just see if we get any kind of interesting strings. Whoa, we get, uh, we get Baidu, which is like the it's like the Chinese Google or whatever. So so that's that's super interesting. Again, Chinese device uh, might be calling back to to Baidu.com. We get some things that look like a MAC address. So that's that's interesting. That's that's pretty pretty interesting. Um, fave group. Okay, Anycast. Okay, this is interesting because Anycast is like, that's like another name on the box here. So for this device. Um, okay, and then I see something that looks like just, I mean, this is just like garbage. All right. So let's, uh, let's like make it only find longer strings and let's look from the top. Okay, so we have the bootloader identifier string right at the top. Um, some other interesting stuff. Yeah, I can't, I can't say for certain if this is a Linux device yet, right? I haven't seen any like signs that it is. Expand RAM EXT, very interesting. All right. Okay, this all looks maybe like something that's a part, yeah, 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 yeah. This is all part of the bootloader here. All, all, all those things up there must be related to the bootloader. Oh, and that's it, that's all the strings. Okay, um, and I saw something up here, something about a key. It does make you wonder if some of this is encrypted. And Binwalk actually has a tool that helps you try to figure out if some data inside of firmware is encrypted. And it's a dash capital E flag, not lowercase e. That does extraction. Dash capital E does an entropy check. And it should, if I have all the libraries installed correctly, it should actually graph out the entropy. There we go. Let's uh, move that to the other side so my face is not in the way. That is exactly what I thought. Okay, so here we can see that the entropy is like low. So this is at the beginning and, uh, and towards the end there. And what that tells me is that there's like, there's data and you see that text at the beginning and some at the end when we run strings, but you see this middle section where it is like right up at one. What this is a telltale sign of is one of two things and uh, mathematically, you can go study this in cryptography or like, you know, number theory or whatever. Um, it's hard to tell. It could be one of two things. It's probably one of two things. It's either compressed data or it's encrypted data. But you can't tell just by an entropy calculation which it is, right? Um, it could be secure, like secure crypto, or it could just be like, compression, right? That you just have to know the right compression algorithm to decompress the data. Um, but that is very interesting. Again, potentially encry encrypted, uh, maybe by something else that's like, you know, contained in the bootloader itself. But like I said, that's going to need to wait for a later time. So, um, that is the firmware file though, that we have extracted from this system. We've got some interesting strings and we've got some data that now when we put this chip back on the device, we can do some, we can try to do some dynamic analysis of different pins on the CPU, maybe get some UART data and all of that. So we are also gonna show in this video reattaching the, the chip. So we're going to make sure that we can uh, yeah, solder this chip back on 
so that the device works for our dynamic analysis for next time. So let's pop over to the desk and we will do that really fast. So we're going to pull the flash chip off, set our reader to the side. We don't need that anymore. We got a very good read. Ah, that still has flux on it. So whenever I'm using flux, uh, like, like sometimes if I'm just using solder, I don't use, I don't wear gloves, but that flux, it, it's nasty on your hands. And when you wash your hands, it still feels like it's there. So I'm going to put some gloves on and we're going to, uh, so this is something I probably should have looked at beforehand, but uh, let's, let's pop over the microscope and look at things from this perspective. Let's get it in focus. There we go. So uh, obviously the chip, we know where pin one is. And if I would have been paying attention before I took the chip off, I would have known that. But you can actually see here, there is a, there's a diagram of the chip here. And it's telling me that pin one is located on this pin right here. That's this little circle. This is a really poorly like etched, like drawn diagram on this PCB. But uh, it is telling me that it wants the chip to sit, if I can get it up here, like this, right? So you pin one indicator on the board and on the chip. And so I'm just gonna kind of set that in the place where I, uh, oh, actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna throw a little bit more flux down here. And I'm gonna take my soldering iron and I'm gonna get some good solder here so that we can solder it back on just fine. But, uh, all right, yeah, we're gonna turn on our air extraction. You know, this solder seemed pretty good. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of good solder to it, get it heated up. All right, that looks great. Again, the chip came off so fast that I, like it almost makes me wonder if this is not lead-free solder that they had on the board, but I mean, most stuff that's man when it's manufactured does use lead-free solder. All right, so I've got the chip kind of in the right spot, and now I'm just gonna throw hot air at it. And then with that flux there, when the chip heats up, it should just kind of pop right into position. I, it, it is actually, it does actually look like it's in the right position though, so. Oh, there you go, you saw it slide just a little bit right into place it's like a like a magnet it just knows where its home is at when you got flux and hot solder all right that looks great okay so i'm gonna let that cool for a little bit and i can turn off my air extraction and i'm going to wait uh a little bit before I put the isopropyl alcohol in there because it'll like, it'll boil it off the chip if it's so hot. But I have yet to, I have yet to brick a chip because I do this too fast. So there you can see it, <laughs> it's so hot it like, it evaporates it off really fast. But just gonna try to clean up that mess of the flux that I created. And do some more. And there we go. That chip is reattached. That looks good. That looks good. So we are now ready to do our dynamic analysis, which we will do in our next video. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you watch to the end, please uh, subscribe. That's a, a free way that you can support this channel to keep uh, growing it and getting it out there to more people. Uh, and definitely comment below, join our Discord. If you have questions, you can definitely give me a YouTube comment below this video, but 
there's going to be way more people that can help you in our Discord. We have over a thousand people in there now and growing. So want to thank everybody who's been a part of that. I got nothing else for you. Have a great day.